Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be making a procedural bundle of wires using geometry nodes. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm in this situation with the short film that we're working on right now. It just doesn't have the, the level of detail I want for the shot. So I was trying to think of like really cool ways that I could like quickly add in more detail. And one of the things I wanted was a kind of a wire system. So we could have like bundles of wires like traveling along the floor plane here up with little brackets and stuff that hold them in place. And I was thinking about how long that was gonna take and how tricky that would be to get everything working. And then it dawned on me, hey, we could use geometry nodes to solve this really simply. I want to start off with just like a polygon shape. It's like just a simple line that defines where I want these cables to go. So I'm actually going to create a mesh plane. I'll scale it up a little bit. I'll go into edit mode, hitting tab, and then I'll just grab a box around these two and delete those vertexes. So I just have this line here. So I'm going to leave edit mode. Just come up here to object set origin, origin to geometry. And then I can just zero out its position. So now it's dead center. I see. Go into edit mode and I will hit S and Y just to scale this out a little bit. Um, and then just for interest, I guess I'll take this, uh, I'll take both of these actually. I'll hit E to extrude, E to extrude, grab Y, bring this out and grab this one, E to extrude and grab Y. So I've got this like simple one edge object. The idea is I could use this to kind of just map out the path of my hallway. I want to convert this into a densely packed bundle of wires that wrap around each other, have some noise, and have brackets that kind of clamp them to the wall intermittently. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to come up here with my view, and I'll take my timeline, and I'm going to switch over to the Geometry Node Editor. We're going to click New to create a new Geometry Node setup, and I'll call this Wire Bundle. Take the geometry, and we're going to go for a subdivide mesh node. Now let's take this and let's convert it to a curve. Uh, so mesh to curve. And I'll just drop this here. And then let's change it to a Bezier. So it's got curves, the spline type to Bezier. Now we need to set the handles to what they should be. And so we'll actually see what's going on. So I'm going to come here, curve, set handle type, drop this here. And we want to set this to auto. And you can see that it's starting to get some, you know, kind of gross, bizarre curves. It's mostly because it's just making the left handle auto. So I need to shift D, duplicate and switch this to right. So now I'm getting the left and right. It still looks gross, but that's okay. What I want to do is see if I can like introduce some noise into this. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to grab a noise texture, grab a set position node, mix RGB. And what we're going to do is basically we're taking the random noise that we're getting from this noise texture. It's, just, it's a grayscale image too. So it's if we're grabbing, using the factor. So it's a zero, zero to one values, right? And I want to use those zero to one values to offset the position of the, the curve in some just random ways. I'm not too particular about how it does it. I just want to put some random noise into it. So if I use this straight up, it's just going to use like, it's going to offset it fully from zero to one, right? So I want to regulate it somehow. I want to like make these values smaller. So I'm offsetting just a little bit. I could use a mix node, right? We could, uh, let's say, mix it with black, which is all zero. So if we mixed fully to black, it means it's not going to do anything. I could bring this in a little bit and it's going to mix it a tiny bit between these two if I was to plug this in here. We're going to plug this in and I'll just drag this up a bit. And it's, you can see it's going to start to make it really squiggly. This is where we can really see how many points we've got in this spline. You can see we're getting a lot of like detail in the noise. I might bring the scale of my noise down so it's kind of larger hills and valleys. All right, so now what we're gonna do is actually turn this into a wire. So I'm going to uh, go over here and go, uh, let's see, uh, curve to mesh, drop this here, and then I'm gonna grab a curve uh, primitive circle, drop this here, and I'll plug this in as the profile curve. This will run this uh, circle across the entire length. I can bring the resolution down so I don't have quite so much geometry. So now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this and then change these rotation values. So I'm going to switch this to 4D, the noise texture, and this will give me the W factor, which basically doesn't change the scale, the size, or the detail or anything. It just kind of shifts the noise space around a little bit. So what I can do with that is I can come here and I could say, all right, let's join geometry. Now I want to make several iterations of this. This is the part where we need to iterate on and have different versions. So what I'm going to do is just do it like this. I'll say I want like four of these, and then I'll just plug each of these in. 
So let's take the output from this here, and we're going to plug it into the geometry for each of these. And then let's have a look at, there we go. So as you can see, if we change this value on these guys, it's going to change the cabling. What we can do from here now is we can add in some brackets. So it's like, let's create some brackets along the wall. So it's like each of these is being held on. So let me go curve primitive, curve circle, right, curve to mesh, drop this here. I'm just going to turn all this off for now. Uh, we'll, we'll look at this again in a minute. Plug this in right here, say curve primitive. Let's get a quadrilateral and plug that in as the profile curve. And then let's take the width down. Now this particular thing I want to shade, don't want to shade smooth. So I'm going to type in set shade smooth. I'll drop it here and I'll untick the box, transform. And let's rotate on the X 90 degrees. And let's bring our joint geometry over here and I'll join this in to the group. Now we can see it in comparison to everything else. So now we can take the radius right down and the height down. Let's keep playing with this. Now it's been offset. Remember everything's been offset up. Let's get a transform node. And there would be a mathematical way to get the exact position based on the factor here. We don't have to be that crazy. Like we could just do this by eye. Like that's perfectly acceptable. Now, after we make that transform, now we want to add in this guy. So I'm going to shift D to bring the join geometry node up, grab this one and plug it in here. Now I've got my bracket in the right spot. Now let's grab, we're going to grab the instance on points node. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take, we need to take the original geometry all the way over here. So take this output. We're going to plug it in, come over here. So we'll plug it into the points input there. And then we want to grab an instance, which is going to be this, this bracket that we've just made right here. I'll grab this and I'll stick that in here. And if we just bypass everything for a second, just have a look at this. And see what it's done is it's created a bracket at every place where we had a vertex on the original mesh line. So our original mesh line is just this simple boxy shape, right? So each vertex now we've got a bracket. If we want to have a few more brackets. We can come here and subdivide the mesh. We we'll just drop this here and that will subdivide the whole thing. Okay, so now that we've created these, these brackets along this curve, what we need is directional, in <laughs> directional information. All right, I can do this. Hang on. Just compose myself, just drink some more coffee. Instance these brackets along the curve. We need to orient them along this object, right? And vertexes don't have a direction, right? They're just vertexes. They're just positional points in 3D space. What we can do is take a curve, right? And curves have tangents, which are a, a direction of the curve, right? Which way the direction uh, the curve is headed in. So if we can convert this thing into a curve, we'll actually get some directional information that we can use. So what I'll do here is I will go shift A and I'm going to go uh, mesh to curve. So we're going to convert it to a curve. So nothing changes visually, but now we have this extra bit of information. So now what I can do is use that to rotate. But to do that, I need to convert the tangent, which is like a vector. It's a direction in 3D space. We need to convert that into rotational information. So there's a great node for that called align Euler to vector. And I'll just drop this here. And what we'll do is we will grab the, let's see, we go to curve and right over here, curve tangent. This will grab the tangent of the curve. So I can plug this in as the vector to convert. And now it's going to turn it into rotational information. And I can plug this rotation into the my, my uh, instance on points node. Now you can see they've all rotated a little bit, but in the wrong direction. So we just need to play with these. There we go. So why is it we want? So now these brackets will follow that curve. So now when we join all of these systems up, we're going to get brackets that follow the same curve as everything else. Now we need to adjust them a little bit so they're a tad bigger, so they actually contain everything. So I'll come back over to here and I'll take my radius up. Okay, so what we probably should do is limit the factor of all these guys. I'm going to come over here and create a value node, 0.5, and I'll plug this into the factor. So we control the factor for all of these guys. And I'm going to take a hunch that because we are moving all these guys 0.25 in the negative and we're mixing 0.5, I'm wondering if it's just, you know, half of whatever it is we do over here. I have a math node and I'll just multiply. Sorry, I'll zoom in so you can see. Multiply negative one and we'll take this value right over here. Actually, I want to, I want to divide by negative 0.5. So I'm halving it. Oh, sorry. Multiply is what I'm thinking. Multiply by negative 0.5. That'll give me that same value. So now let's see what happens if I decrease this. Yeah, it appears. So it gives the illusion that everything's staying still, but actually it's just offsetting correctly. So there we go. I could just bring that down a bit so they're not so crazy. 
Cool. I feel like this bracket, the mesh is kind of super simple. So maybe let's like expand it a little bit, add a join geometry and I'll just drop this here. And let me grab another transform node. This here, I'll plug this in here. Actually, no, sorry, this one I'll plug in and then I'll join this up with it. And then what I want to do is scale it down. So if I scale it down and then move it on the, not X, I want to move it on the Y a little bit. Kind of give it like a double double look there, double bracket, and then maybe one more going the other way. So instead of negative, I'll just make that positive. Okay, so we're going to come over here and I'm going to come over and create some new materials. I'll just create it on this object, even though we won't see them yet. Um, I'll switch to rendered view. I'll turn on bloom, ambient occlusion, and screen space reflections. And I'll come up here and I'll turn off scene world. And I'll just use one of the set HDRIs. Um, I guess we'll just use this dark one here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll come over to this material and um, I'll take the first one and let's grab a set material node and let's drop it. Let's see, we want to color the wires differently, I think. So I'm going to come over to where my wires are and I'll drop this here and I'll set this as the first material. And let's give our first, you know, cable like a bit of a red color. Um, don't want any metallic. I might turn my roughness down a touch, maybe kind of make it, I don't know, maybe turn it up actually. Bring out my specular. That's pretty good. Um, and then let's create another material right here. I'll base it on this first one. So I'll grab that one in the drop down, and then I'll click the double page icon to, to basically duplicate it. And I'll just shift the color of this one over to like a blue. And I'll duplicate the set material and I'll drop it onto this next one and I'll change the material. Uh, and I might just use that again and use that again. So now we've got materials for all these guys. Now the bracket, I'll come up here and I'll duplicate a set material node, bring it up here to the brackets and I will click plus, create a new material. Material three, uh, this will be my bracket. I'm gonna turn up metallic. I'll go ahead and set this as material three. And I'll bring my roughness down like that. Cool. Anyway, so what we've got now effectively is a procedural wire system that we can string up and make, you know, go all over the place. So, you know, I could go back into edit mode and, you know, grab any of these points and move them around. Anyway, so it's easy to sculpt out. And we can also like come over here and hit E to extrude and then like grab this and, you know, like extrude out whole new sections. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch all the videos that I make when they come out, ring the bell so you can get notifications and please check out the Patreon. You can really support the work that I'm doing by sign up over, signing up over there. Uh, we've got lots of live streams. All the live streams go up over there with lots of extra stuff that I do um, that I cut out for the main tutorials. You can also get the project files like this project file, which will be available this month and next month if you sign up. You'll be able to nab it along with a bunch of others. I put in about four or five project files every month. Um, so always worth being subscribed to get those. A lot of fun things to work with. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later. Bye. Yeah.